Reading from Archetype of the Apocalypse by Edward Edinger, page 176. This ordeal of the apocalypse, beginning now and to which all of humanity is being subjected, corresponds to Job's ordeal in the Bible, yet even more pertinently to Christ's ordeal. Christ was the first attempt of the God image to incarnate and transform itself. Now, the second time around, humanity as a whole, and not just one person, is going to be the subject of that process. God is going to incarnate in humanity as a whole, and in that incarnated form, offer himself as a self-sacrifice to bring about his own transformation, just as he did with the individual Christ. The matter is put clearly, if densely, by Jung in his classic letter to Elenid Kochnik in June of 1956. Christ was up against an unpredictable and lawless God who would need a most drastic sacrifice to appease his wrath, that is, the slaughter of his own son. Curiously enough, as on the one hand his self-sacrifice means admission of the Father's amoral nature, he taught, on the other hand, a new image of God, namely that of a loving Father in whom there is no darkness. This enormous antinomy needs some explanation. It needed the assertion that he was the Son of the Father, i.e. the incarnation of the deity in man. As a consequence, the sacrifice was a self-destruction of the amoral God incarnated in a mortal body. This passage can be applied precisely to Yahweh's second act of incarnation in humanity as a whole. Humanity is now in the role of the Son of God, and God is bringing about his own transformation by another self-destruction, which incarnated in the mortal body of humankind. There will follow necessarily, archetypally, the same sequence of events as occurred in the life of of a single individual, but now in a larger arena, and this second act of incarnation likewise will bring about the same goal, a transformation of the God image, the image of a totally good God, albeit pestered by a dissociated evil Satan, is no longer viable. Instead, the new God image coming into conscious realization is that of a paradoxical union of opposites, and with it comes a healing of the metaphysical split that has characterized the entire Christian eon. This is what can happen, potentially, but the process of transforming the God image can take place only if its human participants are conscious of what is happening, because consciousness is the agency of transformation for God and man. There is, of course, no transformation of the God image if we end up with nothing but a heap of ruins and a group of savages having to make the laborious climb to civilization all over again. But the God image can incarnate in a way that averts massive destruction if there are enough individuals aware of the unfolding archetypal drama that is before us. I do have to share with the reader that it is my view that the transformation of the God image is ultimately certain because one person, Jung, has already realized what is going on. I believe that is all it takes in principle to bring about eventually a positive outcome, but then eventually can be a very long time. My hypothesis remains, however, that the extent of the destructive collective process will depend on how many other individuals can achieve Jung's level of consciousness. How many will it take to reach this critical mass that will make a difference? The book of Revelation hints at the number 144,000, but what that symbolic number means literally cannot be known.